You having trouble there, Wa? Come on back. You're good. Don't you even serve me. She's got that servant's heart. An old sign underneath it. Cleanest one I've ever saw. <laughs> Big fatty hoops. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> <laughs> Lemon's <is> poison. <laughs> Y'all are... Ran into our first problem. Nice car. Yeah. Boxing the flip flop. Ooh, looking good. Kid off of Willy Wonka. You're not my towel. <laughs> Go. <laughs> you better calm down. First try, son. <laughs> Today's a good day. Did y'all find your pantyhose? You missed your leave, bro. What are you painting? There you go. Oh, no. Oh, oh Lord. Oh. Multitude of greatness. What was Jamie Mountain? I am speed. Raymond's in the pool. This. That ain't gonna fit. Wind is a whipping. You know he's got the prize bar in. Where'd that come from? One, go. Letting it crust. <laughs> oh, wow. Solid. Gucci, Gucci, cute. No. Oh, she's putting the brakes on. Raymond's hard to video. Dang, son. Crazy world we're living in. He said. Being. Mary and Joseph. How y'all doing? Squash around down. You even question me? <laughs> oh. She's beautiful. Eighty-seven dollar camshaft. Burgers. And bigger. Is better. Come on. You are pretty. He's the new Billy Goat. You Billy want a treat? <laughs> George Jones. Welcome back to the Sleeper Dude YouTube channel. This video took us ten months on and off to film. So at the beginning of this, we're at the old shop working on this car. Now in this video, we're taking this 83 Ford Fairmont Futura and we are narrowing the rear axle in it. We're also plumbing the entire car, doing some welding, trying to button up all our little detail stuff to get this thing ready to race. So let's get right to it. And here's me 10 months ago. So it's a special day today. Wawa graduated eighth grade. She's off school <laughs> before the other two. So we're gonna pull the rear axle out of the Fairmont and take it down to the actual shop down in Georgia. And if you can look right here, it's even bulging the casing out. So this rear end, I believe is out of like a 94 and up Mustang. So they have a wider track width. I mean, we could get custom offset hoops for it, but I mean, I would like to be able to have like a set for street casings, a set for slicks and go buy a bunch of custom offset wheels. It's not cheap. With this right here, uh, we're not gonna be able to drive it with three kids in the back seat and a trunk full of luggage and fuel. So we're gonna pull this rear axle out. I've done a bunch of measuring and we should be able to narrow this five inches total. So two and a half on each side. And it, these hoops will fit perfect again. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull it out of here and head down that way. Lord, look how wide them casings is, Wall. I don't know if they'll fit even once we narrow this. See, we got like, I don't know, two, two and a half inches on the inside and that's about how much it's sticking out. You having trouble there, Wall? That is incredible. Here, you got it? Maybe. All right. Yeah, just don't pull out on it. These are like a standard offset 10 inch wheel. So that's the most common back spacing. It's pretty evenly split. That's why we're narrowing it five inches. So if we buy other ones, they'll fit as well. Yeah, look how slammed it is in the quarter. Wow. Full extension. Remember, two lug nuts is all you really need. Oh, wait, look at that. That's crazy. <laughs> I don't know. Those things might be 12 inches wide. They are a 295.50. I plan on running like a 275.60 on it probably eventually when I can afford some casings. We need to polish those up, don't we? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Good thing about this setup and part of the reason why I bought this car is if you look under here, it's already got disc brakes in the rear. It's already got aftermarket control arms. So it already had a lot of good stuff. According to the tag, this says it's a 273 gear with a posi. I don't know if it's been changed or not. We're about to find out. This has the air shock nod, which I guess they did to keep the casings off the quarter as much as they could. But you can see they've been rubbing like crazy under here. They've also rolled the lip on the quarters. We put a little bit of pressure on the jack to keep this thing from falling when I take the shock loose. What are you chickens doing? I'm just gonna come in the shop and check it out. See, now the shocks are off of it. It can 
completely relax. Unfortunately, I gotta unhook the brakes on this one. I, I just don't like having to bleed brakes. We do it all the time though, don't we? Yeah. Sometimes if you have a bolt that's stuck, you can get a wrench that's smaller than the head and push while you do the impact. Right there, right there. When's the spring gonna pop out on us? There we go. There goes my ears. I put a set of these exact control arms on my first turbo car, my 88 turbo coupe. And it completely stopped the wheel hop issue I had. They're just cheapies. I mean, the, the front of this car has QA1 stuff. And I'm not seeing anything on these springs. So I don't know what they are. You ready to come out? We're out. What'd that take? 15 minutes? Maybe. Come on. What's up? Come on, big boy. We gotta get this rear end cover off and see what gear the ratio this is. With a turbo car like this, you don't need quite as much gear ratio. You're always going to run your fastest time, though, gearing it for whatever length you're racing. So if you think you're going to do 150 and a quarter mile and your engine, say it makes peak horsepower at 6,000. So if you gear it where with a 28 inch tall casing, you're going to be at whatever, 6,000, 6,500, 7,000 at the finish line. That is where you're going to run your fastest time. But in my experience, going to a higher gear ratio, it doesn't kill as much ET as you would think when it's on a turbo car. My LTD wagon, we ran a 273 gear, a 456 gear, I can't remember the other one now, 350 gear, I think. And that car ran within a tenth of its best time with all three gear ratios. So it's not as big of a deal. So I'm probably gonna go with a higher gear ratio. We may even do a 273, we'll see what's in here. I believe this is to help with wheel hop as well. Somebody's put polyurethane bushings in, so that's good. You think it's got the factory gear or not? <laughs> Impossibly. My guess is it doesn't, because it's a really common upgrade to swap gears. Uh, it's got the factory Ford numbers on it. It also has a really big pinion gear, so I'm gonna bet that this is a factory 273 gear, which honestly is fine with me. I really like a car with a high gear, honestly. I'm planning on doing like drag and drive events and stuff with it, so I really want something I can get out on the highway with. So we're gonna start here and count the teeth. So there's the Ford emblem. One, two, three, uh, that's 41. And the pinion is 15. So if you do 41 divided by 15, that'll tell you your gear ratio. And this is a factory 273 gear. So I'll tell you right now, I'm gonna keep that gear. I'll probably lose a tenth or two off my ET, but also it may help us on the starting line because you see a lot of guys who have big power, big block turbo cars, and they might have like a, whatever, a 373 gear or something, but they take off in second gear. So their starting line ratio is, is not as harsh. Well, with having this rear end gear like this, that'll help our starting line ratio so it doesn't completely uh, spin right off the, the hit. So yeah, I'm gonna keep this gear. Because we're going to a bigger spline axle, we're gonna switch from this posi unit to a full spool, just like I've had in some of my other cars, like the Starlet, the Maverick, the LTD, they were all spools. This should be a 28 spline axle and we're gonna step it up. I'm not sure what yet. We're gonna get to the axle place today. I don't know if it's gonna be 31, 33, 35, whatever they think is best. Do you think me and you and mom can load it? We'll see. We'll get as close as possible. Look, she got her tongue half out. This is getting serious. Mom back, honey. Mom back. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, she doesn't kick her in four low. You hear it squeaking? I bet she got her Crocs in sport mode, too. Mom back. You're good. Surely we can get this in here. I wish you'd buy me a tractor. Don't you even start me. I'll go today. Sign on the dotted line. You get in there and I'll hold you. Hey. We're incredible. Beautiful. I thought that was going to be like impeccably hard to carry. <laughs> impeccably. She didn't, she didn't know what that word means. We got to get a shirt. Just yeah. says impeccable. <laughs> <laughs> Go check out thesleeperdude.com. We got some new merch right now. Glow in the dark keychains. It's just a whiskey dip sticker. We got Ralphie metal artwork. We got wall wall drawings. We got squeezy paintings, hoodies, hats, t-shirts, a little bit of everything. 
Go check it out, thesleeperdude.com. We appreciate your support. You can check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at sleeperdude88. Check out our second channel, sleeperdude2, and our third channel, sleeperdude on. Thanks for your support. Woo! We're taking a special trip down here to Georgia, just me and her, because mom had to go help somebody go to the doctor's office today, because she's got that servant's heart. Thank you, guys. Yes, sir. Check out Hudlow Axle in Rossville, Georgia, and they'll hook you up. So we're gonna have a big upgrade there with the rear axle. He recommended going with nine inch housing ends and 35 spline axles, cause going to 35s versus 31s, there was no difference in price. So we're going with a full spool. They're also gonna build me a three inch steel drive shaft. It's the correct length with a 4080 yoke on the front of it. Well, it's been a couple months. They ran into some parts issues and some employees that were out sick and you know just delays you know how it is ever since 2020 so we're headed back down here to pick up our rear axle now me and ralphie could not be more excited about this moment right <laughs> so hopefully in just a few minutes we're gonna have our rear axle and we can get it put back in the fairmont and get Yay. going with this project again you did that you gotta love this big city traffic don't you and this construction march hates it just saying <laughs> Neither one of us like big city traffic. Look at this old wood, they've tore off this and that old sign underneath it. Love the old buildings, you know. We're in Georgie now. You got any songs for Georgia? Georgia. I knew it. I love the view of the ridge up there. You know, there's a lot of historical stuff here like uh, Lookout Mountain and Missionary Ridge and all that from the Civil War. A lot of history down here. Oh man, look at that tin top samurai. Oh, I love those things. We've had two of them, not a tin top though. I think that's the cleanest one I've ever saw. And it's not like the one I had that got sold. <laughs> you had a really clean one too, yes. Well, we got the man paid. We're gonna back in here and load this up. This is the very first rear axle I've ever had that's like serious, you know? I've always had just stock stuff. Can't go nowhere. <laughs> Everybody recognizes Marge with that hair. <laughs> Ooh, wow, Lord. we got it loaded up. Good deal. Awesome. Hey, look, here's a 62 Impala. My dad would freak out, look at that. Is she for sale? No. Dad wants a 62 bubble top, which has the more rounded roof. It was like the 61 roof on a 62 car. Got the big flag, so it's a 327 or 409. Just a quick trip to Georgia. We're already back. <laughs> <laughs> and just like that it's been a couple weeks and we finally got a chance to work on this thing this project has been a long time coming i cannot wait to see if our big fatty hoops will fit under here now all right ralph we slide that forward over there you got it uh, we gotta get a jacket this somehow uh. it's been a long time since we worked out here in this building yeah good times man long time if I had a dollar for every time somebody commented, hey, you should fix your entry into your shop. Man, the good old days. <gasps> All right, we're gonna try to put the rear end under it and then take it down to the other shop where we have more tools and lift and stuff. Okay, I can't. Oh, wait, oh. right there. Oh, 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 come back. Like that's the way it needs to be. Okay. We lost the other half of our handle somewhere. It's probably moved to the other shop. To the other shop. Get those jack stands, please. We'll just sit on jack stands for a second. I slide on your axle too. <sighs> Where I lose this thing. We gotta get these controllers on top of there, Ralphie. You see that shock squeeze? Push that to where we can jack this rear end up. All right, go up, Paul. Where's my thing? Uh, the hole right down here, squeeze. It needs to we just gotta get up that high, yeah. The my side needs to go to towards the front. Okay. And the rear end needs to be up a little higher. I'm close right here. I need like an alignment thing. I don't have any tools. I'm really close. Okay, hold on. I can see um, I think I might can get a bolt in. Okay. Eventually, I'd like to put adjustable control arms and stuff on it, but these are better than stock, so. There you go. Look at that shiny aluminum cover, huh? That looks good. Yeah. It needs to go like down my way. If I do that, I think you can maybe get it in, Ralphie. Yeah, keep going. 
it's all the way in. We're really close. Let me, yeah. Oh, there you go. That was easy. Ralph, how excited are you about working on this car? 10 out of 10. He has literally been talking my ear off about this thing for eight months or whatever since we've worked on it. Bring the jack around here. The handle will come out on you. Oh, wow. Okay. And the rear end's still going down. All right. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, stop. Alright, go back up. <laughs> hey, babies. Hey, babies. There you are. Oh, Murphy. There you are. Hi, guys. Hi, <laughs> Rocky. Hello, pretty girl. She's like the old shop. We're back over here. How you doing? So, I'm going to put a ratchet strap on this because. We need the rear end to rotate. We tried to push it, and it didn't really work. Okay, keep going. Okay. Here we go. What is she doing? Getting the New Yorker? <laughs> what is she doing? She's just lost it, hasn't she? She's nosing around. Go ahead, Wall. Oh, oh. Go up with the jack some now. This is like doing two things at once, isn't it? Yeah. A little more on the jack. <laughs> oh, this one's actually really close. There you go. Okay. Easy peasy. Well, it's it's cool. easy. Oh my gosh. I'll get in the middle of it. <laughs> Here, you get on. Yeah. You get out of the middle. No, walk out. Walk out. This is not Harley. Scary. <laughs> Y'all are destined to with this. Here. Well, we've ran into our first problem. Uh-oh. Our shocks will not mount back up because the caliper is moved in two and a half inches on this mm -hmm. side. So that means we're going to need So we're going to have to make new mounts for our shocks, it looks like. If that's not too big a deal. We'll probably just take it down to the other shop now. If our hoops fit, we'll deal with it there. What if we like welded a tab on, kind of a big one, and just welded it out and put a hole? That's literally what I was thinking. Okay. <laughs> We're all on the same page now. Okay. And this was the point of all this work was to try to get a 10 inch wide hoop to fit under here. Now this is probably not the exact size I'm gonna run because these are a little short and fat for me. I'd prefer this to be like a 28105 or something. If all my math is correct, oh no, these should fit barely in here before they stuck out like two inches and they had air shocks, you know. It should just barely fit. If I'm right. It looks kind of like it, don't it? Yeah. What's the inside look like, Ralph? Good thing we ain't going off margins, math. <laughs> uh, you're rubbing the plastic stuff over there by the spring. You're about to rub the spring. You're like right far. Okay. Just rubbing away. She's rubbing so hard on me. Yeah, it's hilarious. I'd like to eventually put steelies on this, make it look stock. Ooh, I hear a little rub. Oh, uh, it's right where that coil spring is, yeah. Well, well we shoot. can cut that plastic out. This is metal we're hitting. Oh, well, we can still cut it out. <laughs> is it hitting the cool spring though? No, it's not hitting the spring, it's hitting the metal on the outside of that. Okay, well we gotta saw it off. See how they bulge out? This is a 10 inch hoop. I really think it needs a narrower casing on it. Do I hurt? Ooh. Very good. I wonder if it'll help when we air that other one up. Cause it's flat, currently. Nice car. You ready? I don't know. On this driver's side, we actually look pretty good. We got like, uh, I don't know, a quarter of an inch or something. So I think we can make this work. And you can see it's about flush with the outside of the quarter panel. Man, look at that. It looks good on there. Yeah, I love a big wide casing on the back. Skinny's in the front. You like it, Marge? Looks good. Yeah. I like it. All right, let's sit it down on the ground for the first time in a long time. Last time we worked on this, I didn't have braces. Look at that hair. <laughs> Sorry. 
Coyote Peterson. Today on Coyote Peterson, we'll be unboxing the flip flop. There's a lot of overhang in the back of this car. Look how far that rear end is from the, <laughs> the rear of the car. We've been needing these jack stands and jacks for months. Wait, you mean you put jack stands into your car? Yeah. It's funny, the comments half the time ask me, where's the jack stand? It's like, it's under there. I wish you had a longer handle because I'm still under the car. Don't knock your head on it. <laughs> All right. Oh man, it's been a long time. It looks so good. <laughs> now, what's the clearance? Hey, we got about like one, like two inches. Really? Yeah, on this side. Oh, oh. it looks so good. Yeah, that looks great. Because usually the car set up high because the air shock. Oh. Okay. Oh, what's that? Oh, ow. Oh, sorry about your fingers. <laughs> so. Here, don't jam. So All right, jam. No jamsing. There you go. I can't fit my finger between it. But well, you that need was some flat, air. You need some air in this one. Which, oh, might, make it, which might make it worse. It squats so easy. Yeah. It must have some like four cylinder springs under or something. Yeah, they look very thin. Like I could just push push it a little. Yeah. Hey key. Well, I think I did my math pretty close. I mean it's touching inside now. It really just has two wide casings on it. Is yeah. that a thing? Is that a real thing? No. So we didn't even tighten our bolts. We're just gonna roll this thing down there. Right now it has no brakes because we had to take the brake booster off to fit the big block in it. So we are going to hook it to the tractor now and carefully take it down there. These people need to see these seats in the bro hand. Look at that. You talk about Ooh. epitome of luxury. Ooh, looking good. I wish the power options and stuff worked. That's always the problem with these. Oh, look at my hair. I look like that kid off of Willy Wonka, the new mo movie with the weird hair. <laughs> he says, no, thank no. you. No, thank you. I think this is like one of the nicest cars we actually have. I've been trying to tell you all that for years. Well, I mean, we don't have cars with like that nice of interior that actually matches like it's red inside and out. I quit it. And yeah. it's like, there's, there's like, most of it is, it's like not rusted at all and it just looks really good. Like, this would probably be something I would drive. Probably. There you go. What? This, you're not my child. I'm you my, are not my child. I'm, I'm my dad's favorite. <laughs> car goes down the hill and runs into the back of the tractor so the last thing I want to do is hurt a beauty like this. We're going to take all the care we can. With it. We've had to improvise. Oh! The pop of wheat. Look at her go! Woo! 
Well, it wasn't that bad to put the rear end in it, but man, it was more of a job than I thought trying to get it in here. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mainly because I was so worried about hurting it, because <laughs> it's Daddy's baby. Oh, this God. one and the 63 Falcon are my babies, for sure. They're my two favorites, if I had to pick favorites. Ralphie's airing our casings up here. What's that we got in it, Ralph? Zero. Zero. Okay, that's good. Man, I just love the looks of this car. It may not be for everybody, but it's definitely for me. So if you don't know from before, this is a 454 big block, stock crank, aftermarket rods, aftermarket pistons, twin GT45 turbos from eBay. These are like 150 buck turbos a piece. Chinese 50 millimeter wastegates, I believe. No blow off out because we don't really have enough popping to have to have it. It's got an $87 Summit Racing camshaft. Flat tap it hydraulic. It's got a set of Chinese Speedmaster heads that have been ported by somebody before we got them. Wired up with Holly Terminator X, 220 pound high impedance injectors. And when we did the last video, we just threw a bad 4L80E in it that I had sitting around here. But one of the big parts we got in, which is why we're back on this, is we have a brand new rebuilt BNM 4L80E. So it's got like, you know, the shift kit and all the good clutches and stuff. And actually, I've had a Circle D billet lock up converter for this thing for like. I don't even know. I looked like on it. It was several year. years, like at least two years. So this is going to have the same type of converter that the LTD wagon had in it. So you can lock it up under full power. It's a multi-disc lock-up billet converter. Their slogan is try to break it because they're super stout. And I know personally that the LTD mile an hour, like five or six miles an hour better with that converter. So basically when you lock it, it makes it like a manual transmission and you don't have any slip. We've got to plumb this thing, and we've actually got to pull the motor and transmission back out, install the oil pan and the intake permanently, and put our new converter and transmission on there. Woo! What should we do first? Plumb it. All right, let's do it. So we got a bunch of hoses and fittings here. I got a whole bag full of Earl's fittings. Some of this is leftover stuff from plumbing, you know, the Gremlin and the Pinto and the motorhome and all that. And some of it I ordered some more. This is every piece of Earl's hose we have in the building as well. We also have a transmission cooler. We got a mount. This is actually the same transmission cooler that's on the motorhome. So it ought to be big enough, you would think. I thought it looked familiar. Yeah. I guess I'm gonna go ahead and do the feed line and return line for the turbo. And Ralphie's gonna swap out our valve covers because I like these valve covers, but I actually found out that they rub my rocker arms. So I've got some different valve covers that are not fabricated aluminum ones, they're just cast aluminum. I'm hoping they will clear the rockers. There's a washer on We got 1.7 roller rockers, guide plates, big 3 8 push rods, and the whole deal. I love finned aluminum valve covers. This is gonna be like our oil fill, our vent. You also have another spot here. It says it's for PCV. See, this lip here is pretty wide on these. And we were having trouble with our rockers rubbing against it. So like right here, the rocker was rubbing that. So I'm hoping this has a more narrow one. I'm not sure if it does or not. I can't wait to wash this thing, buff it. It has really nice interior. It has pretty good paint on it for the cars we mess with. I think it's gonna look really good when I finally clean it up. Oh, I like that better already. Yeah. It seems like it's gonna clear better, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. If you had stock rockers, it probably wouldn't be a problem, but I like that look, don't you? It looks great. Eventually, this is all going to get ground down, and I'm probably even going to do body work on it, honestly. Oh my gosh. And this is going to get painted black as well. Our headers are probably going to get wrapped, and then we may even put the heat shields on these, you know? Yeah. There's our feed flange for our turbo, so this is like a 4AN. Look at the other side, Ralph. <laughs> so they come with these really small holes. I think they do that because one of two reasons. One is like ball bearing turbos take like hardly any oil at all to run like basically nothing so every time i've ever done one of these i usually drill like a eighth of an inch hole in that so it has some decent flow another reason why i think they do it is if you don't have a good gravity drain source for your turbos you can back up oil in there and push out past the seals and smoke i've had a car do that before as well we're planning on having a really good drain back system so i'm gonna drill these out well can i weld this up like you just want to weld things yeah if you want to you could unbolt this and take it off and weld it. We may have to test fit it back on at some point if we have a hose that goes through here or something. But you could like take that down pipe off and weld it if you want to, yeah. Yay. First try, son. What? What'd you do, Ralphie? 
It just fell. I didn't think it was that loose. So I just had to weld that thingy up. Oh, where'd it go? I'm joking. Hi, guys. That looks really good. <laughs> looks really good. Well, um, yeah, keep it up, buddy. <laughs> looks good. Tells me to stop. I think today's a good day. Is it? All I can say. He's a little welder, I think. He loves it. <laughs> He's been welding like crazy. So this is a pin gauge. I didn't even know it existed until lately, and I was like, I gotta get that. So this will tell me how big the hole is. So it's like 38 thousandths, 39 thousandths, somewhere in there. So it's very tiny. A 1 16th drill bit is 60 thousandths. That'll like double the size. I can always drill it out bigger later if we feel like we need it. And now that I think about it, that may have been the size I went with before was the 16th. I can't remember that. It's been too long. So it's just right there at the very end. It's funny, it's a big hole here. Small hole on that side. Remember, if you can jump it, we can weld it. All right, we'll take the belt sander and grind that booger down at, where it melted through. Gotcha. This thing's been sitting so long, our Chinese turbos have rusted. I thought that Chinese cast iron didn't rust. Oh, My fender, bro. What are you fine. doing? I've trained you better. If you didn't know, the bearing part of these can spin in any direction. So this can spin, that can spin, this can spin. This one was actually sitting in there upside down. So I'm bringing it around to the feed side. The return side has a bigger hole. It's very obvious which one's which. Them girls are already abandoned us. Yeah. Had to go buy pantyhose, really? Can you believe that? What kind of excuse is that? Not a good one. Look at them things. Very nice. Doing good, bud. You're learning. Yeah. Of course, Ralphie can't help it. He's got to clean the corrosion off the intake there. It gets really damp in the other building compared yeah. to over here. So this is a dash four nine degree fitting is what we're going to use. We're using the super stock line, which is really easy to assemble, which is why I use it. So the actual size of this hose is quarter inch inside diameter. It's actually rated to 250 PSI, which we won't have that much oil pressure. This table is like wobbly. <clears throat> yes, it is. See how flared out it is? It's a really tight fit on there. That keeps it in there. We're gonna screw this on here and try to route this back to a oil pressure location somewhere on the engine. I'm gonna kind of point it towards the engine block here. Does a big block Chevy have an oil passage at the top of the block in the back? I don't know. I thought they did, but maybe I'm wrong. I know it has one down over there somewhere. The eventual goal of this thing is to have a really fast street car that maybe we can do drag and drive events eventually with. Fastest I've ever been is 599 at 120, and I would like to beat that time. I would really love to run like 570s because that means you can run an eight second quarter basically. So it looks like I don't have one up there. It looks like the only thing I have is way down here, right above the oil filter, there's a, it looks like a quarter inch pop plug. So I'm gonna pull it out. And we're actually gonna have to split this off three ways. So two to the turbos and one to our oil pressure sending unit. So I found this four way junction here for a quarter inch pop thread. I think that's what we're gonna use. Did y'all find your pantyhose? We got it, yes. Good deal, you. good deal. We were worried about it. <laughs> it's about bedtime now, isn't it? Yes, I'm so sleepy already. Yeah, we got a really late start to videoing tonight. We were working on another video, so. Yeah, we had to put the rear end in it. This was a push button, mo boost button right really? here. It's electric solenoid. Bleed the signal off the wastegate on the Starlet. That's how you leave something. Just go, like, meow. We'll leave that fitting in there. That'll screw right into the block. We actually have ample room surprisingly i'm telling you what look at you the fender covers and all this stuff i was just thinking earlier he sat something on the fender and i was like oh what are you doing okay. they're all used to us working on like cars that are total junk i'm actually worried about the paint on this so i thought i got a fender gripper somewhere around here and i had to find it we'll probably face the sending unit straight out this way so i'll put my quarter inch to dash four fittings on the side, and then we're gonna have to reduce it down from quarter to eighth inch pipe thread for the sending unit. I'm gonna have to get some thread sealer on a, so that'll go like that. That'll go in there, and then this will tee off to my turbos now. 
But we're gonna install this tomorrow because we gotta go to bed. It's getting really late as much as I wanna work on this thing. I know Ralph and me both are ready to pull some all nighters on this thing, but he's got skewed tomorrow. So we will see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Raymond's out walking around tonight. You uh, missed your leaf, bro. Walked right over his leaf. Exactly. He's just a little guy. He looks big <laughs> that close. But Amazing. Ellie's wondering about him. We're going way back tonight watching Citizen Kane. Have you guys ever watched that old movie? Sure. All right, we're back out here next day. Uh, Ralph, do you want to look at making radiator hoses for this thing? Are those the same size or no? No, not at all. Not even close. Okay. The bottom one looks like it's gonna have to go across, and this one's gonna have to go this way. This one's not too bad. This actually rotates, by the way, if you oh. want it to. Maybe you could go get the tote of radiator hose and figure that out. I'm gonna finish up making our little junction block here. So I've already sealed up three sides of this. I've got some tape here. It's not the white Teflon tape that's made for like water. This is actually made for like solvent-based products. Just being honest, I don't have a lot of experience with it, but I have tried it lately, and uh, had good luck. We want something that's gonna last, you know? So this will give us a oil pressure reading to our Terminator X. I can set up a safety in there if I want to, kill the engine if the oil pressure gets below a certain point, or make it light up on the dash if we get into like a warning zone there. So it's nice if you use it. We're gonna get this Dr. Seuss looking thing down in here. I hope there's got enough room for all this. These Fox body cars have a surprising amount of room in the engine bay. Like the old Falcon platform stuff and the early Mustangs have really tight shock towers compared to these. That's a couple of the big things that draw me to like 80s cars is they usually have disc brakes and they usually have wider shock towers, but they're not new enough yet to have modern things that make a headache out of the whole deal. Oh, there you go. Not even close. I just figured out that my quarter inch pop thread, I thought, it's actually 3 8 pop thread, so I gotta find another fitting for that. Was this one on this? I mean, I could do a turn from there to make it the right size. So unfortunately, I don't have anything here that goes from 3 8 male to quarter inch male. So I'm going to have to make my own deal. Uh, I'm sure we could go to town and struggle for hours on end. Maybe piece together something, but I just don't like going to town. Any of y'all that way? So I'm just gonna make it right here. So this is a quarter inch NPT tap. So this gives you a chart on what size hole to drill. So we gotta drill a 7 16 hole in order to thread this in. Well, that was really close to the right size already. Now, let's make some threads. Sounds nice, doesn't it? That should work. And if it doesn't, we'll go buy one at the store when it leaks, when we get the car running. Hey, can I like cut this right here? Um, so that's in? a little too small, bud. It's the only thing I have. <laughs> we may have to get some pipe and make something, huh? Yeah. We may be able to get a flex hose at the parts store that goes from that to that if we know what the distance is, maybe. But that's I a mean, pretty tight turn. It, this looks really nice here. It tightened up. That works really great. It's, it's uh, pretty tight. Mm-hmm, that's uh, electrical conduit, yeah. That was a good effort. Yeah. It fits that? No. Kind of. Can you find a hose that's straight and then curves and then you can just put a short straight piece of metal in there? No. Maybe. Look huh? at that. We would like to one day try to get a shorter intake set up, maybe fit this under the stock hood. Every option I've found so far will not fit. That's fitting right. Yeah. Look, see now you can just put a short piece of metal in there. Well, I'd have to cut that or something. Yeah, you're right. We're gonna have to cut this back some. We should have some sort of short piece of pop there to, to fill in this gap, Ralphie. The only possible problem we might have is there might be a issue with this being the highest spot in the cooling system with an air bubble or something. They do make like remote filler necks for radiators. We might get one of them to go in here. Um, so how long? Is it three inches? Yeah, it doesn't have, well, I mean, yeah, probably like, look, like right three there. Four. But you need to figure out what the diameter needs to be. You don't need to wing it there. Wingman. He's pretty good at winging it. So you need an inch and a quarter outside diameter. Okay. That is not a measuring system. You're such a like 12 year old. 
four-year-old kid is unreal. She's moved the squeezy corner. She's, she didn't like being in the back corner. Hi. What are you painting? Oh. Okay. Very nice. So an 11 sixteenths fits this here. I really wish it had something at the top of the block. That would be more convenient, like an LS motor does, or a lot of other motors, but I don't have nothing on this one, I guess. Okay. Find something that works. Yep. That looks so professional. I know. I've got to cut these. Right there should be the right length for that one. I brought it over and down the intake. Man, a shopping cart is just a great tool to have, you know? It works out so good for all these things. Can I do it freehand here without the vice, you think? I got them clamp pans. Mm, my face got red, but we did it. We did it. We'll have to go through and blow all these lines out. I usually spray like brake cleaner or something through them. You're gonna have little bits of stuff, but since all this is gonna come back apart to pull the motor and stuff, we'll flush it all out then. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah, I'll work. What about the lower hose, bro? What? The lower hose. How am I going to do that? Go under the bottom or something? Yeah, it goes under the bottom, yeah. Okay. We have a, <laughs> we have a radiator designed for a Ford engine. The bottom hose is kind of an issue. Oh! Oh, wow. We have chances. Now I've got to start the process of making my oil drain backs, and these are dash 10 so it's right under the center of this bearing journal here a little hard to get to that's the problem with doing a big block turbo car is it's a uh, tight fit a lot of plumbing the oil comes out of the turbo here i had a 45 degree fitting but i can't do that because i'd run right in the alternator so the oil's got to get from the turbo and gravity feed back into the pan and we can't go too low on the pan or we're going to have issues there Probably that right there is what I'm gonna have to do. And the hose is gonna come around here and then up without getting near this. For now, we're just gonna have to mark where this goes on the pan, because we're gonna have to take the pan off, which the pan's not even bolted on, but we're gonna have to drill a hole in the pan and install that fitting. I think I'm gonna put it right about there to give us the least extreme corner to turn here. So I can go ahead and cut this hose to length. Make sure you give it a little extra. Oh yeah. Just in case. Ralph, you figure anything out over there? Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Why is he laughing? I bet it's gonna be epic. Wall's working on a school project. Smarty girl stuff. She's always working on school stuff. We really lucked up here. We found a hose that already had an end in it. It must have been a failed job on the gremlin or something. That's the only other vehicle I have right now with fuel lines this big. This is actually going to be our fuel line size as well. Five eighths. <clears throat> well, that was easier than the little ones are. It's not bad at all. I guess I'll go ahead and flush some of these out. I said I was going to wait. That right there ought to give us a pretty straight shot. We're just going to have to have something here. I may have to make a bracket. Something that bolts there that keeps it off of that. That should gravity drain back nicely. When I very first put the big block Ford in the Maverick with the turbo, it was a big Detroit diesel turbo and it smoked like crazy because when the drain back went over the frame rail, it went uphill just barely. You can't have any uphill with these. You got it all set up, don't you? Yeah. Man, do I have an idea for you, Marge. Oh no. Nobody wants to drill in their oil pan, but we have a fuel pump block off plate and that goes to the crankcase as well. So I'm gonna drill a hole in it, and that's gonna be our return line. It makes the line only about this long, too, on the passenger side. Cool. Yeah. So we can go all the way down to there. So somewhere about like that. Be careful with the bit. Remember how this went last time? Yeah. <laughs> okay, you don't have to put a lot of pressure. And don't put any sideways pressure on it. A bit may be no good. Let me get you a better bit. You got one ice cream in mama? Yeah, I got one ice cream in that thing was about to be in half. Oh! There you go. You did a great job. Mm. Appreciate that. I'm gonna do the big in here. 
Oh, Lord. Oh, my. Wow. That's huge. That's the correct size for a 3 8 tap. A lot of engineering out there. Yeah. Kind of like that. Okay. So, we're going to take that to the store and see if we can find one that all one piece like that right there. So, that'll fit? Yeah. Isn't that genius, Ralph? We don't have to drill a hole in our oil pan, possibly. Yeah. So what else should I do? You can see the spark plug wires fit we got for it. Okay. So you always want to wrap this stuff in the correct direction. I always remember this because we were working on my dad's 63 and pile when I was a kid, doing the fuel system. One of the neighbors was talking to us about making sure we get it the right direction, and I've always remembered it. It's funny how you learn things from certain people, and then that's the person you think about for the rest of your life when you do that usually you know so here is our return line right into our fuel pump hole that should fit right on there now how'd that dry up with a screw in the end of that look at that it's like a witch's hat <laughs> i know you want oh, to have it yeah here oh, you can have it, it. Mm. oh is it that bad oh he oh, broke it ralph <laughs> here <laughs> thank you okay well i got the spark plug wire on eight and a half millimeters these are MSD superconductor, eight and a half. It looks like we're gonna have to get a different coil wire because that coil wire is an any, not an Audi. And we need to set up for an Audi. If they point at each other, they should drain back pretty easily. I really did not expect this to be this short. That's gonna be super simple. That may be the shortest stack tin one I've ever made. The straight ones are easier to do because they don't turn on you. Like these want to. Oh, there we go. The vice jaws really help. Yeah, there you go, a little guy. So we were actually looking for these parts yesterday. Finally remember where I put them. So we bought these at Ford Fest and they're drag shocks and springs. As you can tell, this one's heavier. These are E-box, I guess. And this will be your right rear. So a common practice back in the day was like, you might buy a football and put it in the right rear and pump it up keep the car from squatting on the launch. Well, serving the purpose kind of like an anti-roll bar does. So I bought these for like 10 bucks, it was nothing. The guy said that 60 foot really good on them. He was a serious racer and just had moved on. So Ralph is gonna swap these out for us. So this one will go in the right rear because that's the way the car flexes, okay? Gotcha. Like right here would be perfect. Just don't get the hose, obviously. I've been kind of rerouting stuff and cleaning up the harness a little bit, tucking stuff back. Now I'm mounting my fuel pressure regulator here. So we're gonna have a dash 10 feed, and then this is gonna be our outlet that goes to our rail, then a dash eight crossover. The return is gonna be right here. We got a dash eight return back to the tank. There we go. Watch your big head. Hi. I ain't got a seven and three eight no. Long, long. <laughs> oh my gosh. This one, right? The bigger one on this side? The big one with the air thing in it. Don't stomp me, Monge. I can't make no promises. <clears throat> We're close. Come on. Uh, there you go. Oh, That's him. Oh, golly, you about killed me. Whew, Marge stomped that thing in there. I stood on it. Go down hard. There you go. This one is noticeably sm smaller than the one we just put in. I think so. Oh, there you go. Okay. I don't know why I thought Ralph could get that in. <laughs> Myself. These are probably just some stalkers, I guess. I don't know. I don't say anything on them. Low rider, huh? <laughs> there you go. That'll make it easy for you to work on both. Yeah. So anytime you're dealing with O-rings, you always want to lubricate them when you install them or you might mess up an O-ring. Well, we figure out the threads on this shock were bad, so I got a 3H24 die and we're gonna make the threads do better and work better and feel better and look better. Multitude of greatness. 
It looks better from here. Yeah. Much better, huh? Yeah. A lot better. I love our fuel sending unit here. So it's got two 450 liter per hour pumps in here that feed up through this. And then it has a built-in return here and a filler neck with a billet cap. I love it. How tight does this have to be? Once you see the rubber start to squish down, you're good. Is that squished? Yeah, it looks like it. It looks like you're good. I was really hoping to do our crossover down low or straight across, but straight across it hits the distributor and I can't turn this line down low because it'll run right into our water temp sensor. So I think we're gonna have to go over the top of the distributor with it. Well, that's how it's gonna have to be right there. Not really any other option. Unless you got real crazy with all the fittings. So that's gonna get our fuel from here to here. I blocked it off here. It's got a dash 10 inlet here, dash 10 outlet there. I'm gonna have to get two nine degree dash 10 fittings that I did not get, unfortunately. I can't make that line yet then. At some point I've gotta make all these lines for our waste gates and to boost reference this right here. Can you get this nut for me? Well, I'm currently making that for JV Weld. What are we JV Weld? We are JV welding our Chinese throttle body. Oh, because, let me just show you here. That guy goes in there, and it was just literally falling out, so I JB welded it. I'm gonna use this as our boost reference source for our waste gates. We don't need that falling out. Should have bought a better throttle body, huh? Probably. You gotta check that stuff on the Chinese throttle bodies, like the throttle blade screws and stuff, because you know where that goes if it comes out. We're probably gonna put these on there to work by a bat or something. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just going off what the guy told me. Okay. Get it, Papa? Yeah. So this is what I'm going to use for all my boost and vacuum sources. What is that? It's just an eBay vacuum boost log, whatever they call it. So I guess you could use it for fuel if you want to. Yeah. So basically I'm going to take my reference from here and go into this. And then I'm gonna split it out to my waste gates, and then if I have anything else, I'll have options for that too. Since our rear axle was shortened, it moved the caliper over and there's lines and junk are all in the way. So we're gonna to have to make a mount to make that go to there. This line was pushing the shock over, so it was probably gonna have issues. So we bent the line over a little, and now we can just drill a hole through this make it work. We just need a hose to go from here to here, and then these guys will go out to our waste gates. That looks clean, huh? Yeah, it looks good. I'm scratch my anodizing now. It actually came with all the plugs and stuff to plug everything off, so that was nice. I, I think these are like 20 bucks on eBay. But that's gonna be it for tonight. Uh, if you haven't figured it out by now, I try to edit during the day while they're at school, and we come out here and work in the evenings together. So, I guess we'll see you guys tomorrow. Shoo! I am speed. Raymond's eating. Raymond's in the pool. He jumped us in the bed. <laughs> We're back! Alright, next day. Y'all gonna mount the shocks, right? Yeah. So, that looks like it's gonna be more simple than we thought it was. So on these wastegates, there's two ports here. There's a lower port and an upper port. In between those is a diaphragm. If you put boost pressure to this, it actually tries to open the gate. If you put boost pressure here, it tries to close the gate. Basically, there's a couple ways you can hook these up. If you want to start out with low boost, which is what you should do if you're, you know, have an untuned engine, you start out putting pressure to the bottom and you can start bleeding that pressure off with a valve or cutting a hole in the hose to get more boost. Then if you want more boost than that, you would leave the hose unhooked completely. If you want more boost than that, you could put a line just at the top and then you could also take it apart and put bigger springs in it. So a lot of different ways to adjust it. I'm gonna start from the bottom of the port. So we're gonna start off on low boost. I'm gonna mount these things. That should be about right. Okay, I'm gonna need you to hold it over the wall. So I'm using the 3H super stock hose here. It's a little thicker and better than the normal fuel hose you get at the parts store. So I go right there like that. I may have to go with some better hose at some point than this. I usually run like small engine fuel hose that has like the braided strands in it. At least initially it should be fine. So this regulator will go up one pound of fuel pressure for every pound of boost. 
Say you have a carburetor of five pounds of fuel pressure, you push six pounds of boost down through it, and now you have more boost pressure than you have fuel pressure, and it just stops fueling the engine. Okay. Even though I'm a couple fittings short, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on here. Because I know what length it's gonna be as soon as I get a fitting for it. I'm gonna run all my supply lines, so all this is dash 10 stuff. I'll cut it just barely long, just in case. You never know, right? So once we get a 90 degree fitting, that'll go right there. I'm gonna put this back through here. One nice thing about running your exhaust forward is you don't have headers and stuff in your way back this way. But we probably will put some sort of heat shielding on this where it gets close to the header or at the back of the engine. Think that'll be enough fuel? Should be. Looks like a garden hose on it. <laughs> okay, this one's mounted. I forgot the lock one. Now pull that all the way to the rear of the car. Okay. I'll feed it this way. Oh, watch out for your baby brother. Okay, I'm gonna have to clamp this up to the floor. I'm gonna pull off this factory sending unit wire since this car does not have a factory fuel tank. And we'll just run our fuel hose up through there. At least this one. Put a grommet on it. I don't need pets right now. Guys, it. Come on. How thick is this? She's <laughs> It's just a grommet. It's not food. It's not food, Ellie. <laughs> She's licking her lips. Ellie. I'm in. This hole ended up being like oval shaped, so I'm gonna make it round. Only drill bit you need right there. What just happened? Hold that there. There we go. <laughs> Find the end of that big fuel hose and put it up to this hole I just drilled. I ain't gonna fit. It's going to go. No, it ain't. I ain't gonna fit. Okay, never mind. It will. <laughs> there you go. Okay. And they're both mounted. Good job, guys. Do you want me to tighten up the suspension parts since you never really tighten them? Yeah, and it's good to do it at ride height like that because it puts it in the bind if you tighten it all while it's drooped. So you've got weight on the rear end. Yeah, go ahead and tighten everything up. All your rear suspension is tightened and mounted. Thank you, sir. Wind is whipping. I was literally thinking the same thing. <laughs> Literally there, thinking know. the same thing. Literal? Literal? We're using these little clampy guys here to hold the fuel line to the floor. Alright, I got it all tied up to the floor now. We just gotta get our 90 degree fitting here. The factory fuel lines are still under there and the factory fuel filter. So if you want to unbolt that whole bracket fuel filter and take all the factory fuel lines loose, that'd be great. Now I'm moving on to the return side, which is dash eight. What in the world? Where is this going? Right up through here. <gasps> There's a huge fuel line. I, I this see other that. huge no, fuel no, line I, goes where it goes. I see the fuel line. That's not the problem. It goes up yeah, right here in the corner. With oh, the oh, 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 oh. Where okay. my hand is. You get it? That's it. Not yet, I haven't. I'm pretty sure it's right there, buddy. I know, but my hand can't grab it yet. You haven't pushed it up far enough. Oh! Hold on. That's it. Thank you. You know how he's got the prize bar under your car? Oh, no. Be careful, Ralph. Be careful. Get it. Get it, get it. Pull it towards the back of the car. Cut it a little bit long here. So we can put our 
fitting on there. I just gotta do my breather, I guess, and that's all. Just going down through the hole they use for their supply line. I didn't really want to use it for the supply, but I'm gonna use it for the vent. Oh no, I'm claustrophobic. Oh my gosh, I'm being squished. I'm gonna try to do this one in the car. Oh man, look at me go. Do you have to use uh, hose clamps on it? I usually put clamps on them if it's a really high pressure situation, but you're not supposed to have to, though. No. It says you can if you want to. Usually I do, especially on like uh, transmission lines and stuff. Why is our list for what we need to get from town say Japanese on it? <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what that was. I was like, why does it say Japanese? Go on. I don't know how in the world you pry this off here, Ralphie. Wow, this is absolutely incredible. What are you trying to wear for this? I'm I hope sorry, you're not you're taking not. my brake lines loose or something. Okay. Wait, wait. Which one? <laughs> That's not the brake lines. Yes, it is. Right. No, we better not be taking brake lines loose. Wait, wait. It's not brake lines. lines. Fuel, fuel, yeah, yeah. Where does it go to? It goes up to the front here? Look, it's these things. I got stuff in my face, Anna. Yeah. <laughs> Always. I, I literally didn't even touch my face. Like You literally I, did right here. I can see it. Oh, look. Where'd that come from? I'm professionally zip tying our uh, lines together up here. By professionally, I mean I clip the ends off. That's when you know you're a professional. Going the extra mile. Yes. Okay. You toss who wins. Three, two, one, go. Oh, oh she got you. <laughs> Tiny and lots of one to one. Okay, one more time. <laughs> Let's go. Two, one. Get that wrist locked in, Ralph. Lock that wrist. <laughs> Man, two in a row. You're done. So there's another line. It's like an evap line we're taking loose too. Trying to get all the extra weight out of this thing, you know? Yeah. Look how rusty that thing was. Ow. Ow. She crusty. She lets it crust, huh? Letting it crust. Uh Here's that line, Ralphie. I don't know where it goes to. Don't get the car. I did not. Okay. Some of these clamps are riveted to the floor. I'm having to cut them. All right, Ralphie, that should all come out now. return lines from the factory, I guess. And this is like a vent line, I believe. This is like an evap line. I'm gonna try to make a little bit of room here. It looks like somebody's already tried to do this once, so we may have no luck. They've already rolled the quarter lip here. Oh, that's moving. I guess y'all already put the hoops on? Yeah. I'll just be happy to see it on them again. It looks so much better. Come on. It's so heavy. Okay. Look how brittle the factory lines were. Yeah. They just snap when you bend them. They don't move down as easy. Ooh, really oh, well, it's got shocks now. Yeah. Yeah, she loves a rub. What is she doing? What? Is, she's going senile. Great. Oh, wow. If she had teeth, oh, look, look, look. She got the lip out. It's out there. That's like a Richardson 112, isn't it? Oh, my gosh. Follow him, same place. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. I think it's going to be... We're going to throw this thing up on the lift now to do our transmission lines. And a little bit more around there. Okay. Well, it's all the way. Well, that must have worked. It's not rubbing, huh? Yeah. All right, get in there and try this. Oh, it's got a spool of hard. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, that's good. Yeah, 
put it in park. Set the parking brake. There it goes. Be careful. This really gives you a shot of how wide them casings are right there. Perfectly even with the quarter. So I feel good about how I got it narrowed. It looks like it's dead on. And it seems like it's doing better now that I beat on those. I'm sure we'll have some more rubbing, but like I said, I'm gonna switch the size anyway. This will give you a better shot of our suspension setup. This is our feed, our return, and our battery cable. Goes down through here. This is our transmission cross member. We built an old episode. And this is the mock-up transmission. So there you go, there's our pan. This thing has full QA1 suspension under it. And it'll probably need new shocks at some point because these are really old. But this is the main reason why I big block swapped this car because it had a full tubular suspension and K-member and everything. Right, Ralph? Yeah. This also gives you an idea of how solid this car is. I mean, look at it. You guys up north are probably so jealous of this one, huh? Uh, this is really clean even compared to stuff around here, though. This is why I bought this car. I got a deal on it. It was 2,000 bucks. Already had the 8.8, the 5.0, and the 5-speed that's in the Galaxy Wagon. I keep thinking about putting Steelys on it and hubcaps. That may happen soon. Here's a better shot of our oil pressure situation I was trying to show you from the top. Ralph is going ahead and hooking back up our rear brake hose here. This thing actually has four-wheel disc brakes as well when I bought it. Look at these floors, guys. Come on. I mean, how can you argue with this? Look at that. Solid. Is that a book? Here? Yes. Yeah, you what know why that? it's there? There's no. two books. That's my correct spacing between my oil pan and oh my, my goodness. manual that steering so box. Fun. That's the most redneck thing I've seen today. <laughs> I'm gonna take this busted up balance off so we can get more access to the front of the radiator. It's only got two bolts in it. Okay, that's tight. Yeah. Here's our B&M transmission cooler. It's a plate style instead of a tube and fin. It's like twice as efficient as the normal ones you see at like the parts store. It would have to be twice this big to be a tube and fin one and get the same cooling. This has a built-in temperature sensor. Once it gets to 170 degrees, it turns this fan on. It's a really nice setup. It's worked really well with our motorhome, so we're gonna do the same thing here. I think I am gonna mount it up front, I believe. I don't know really where else to mount it. It's got four different mounting pads here. I bet I can just bolt it to the bumper right there. I'm thinking right there. You're gonna be blocked a little bit, like that much by the bumper, but I mean, it has a fan on it, you know. Uh, okay, let me drill some holes. So right about there. These cars actually have aluminum bumpers. It's one of the cool things about them. Now the LTDs didn't, because my LTD wagon had big heavy bumpers, but these Fairmonts have aluminum ones. There are holes drilled. We got some 5 sixteenths bolts sticking through the bumper. Got it? Yeah. Are you familiar with Gucci Gucci Q? No, 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 no. No, no. Mm -mm. no Gucci Gucci Q? That's a negative Ghost Rider. That ought to hold in there pretty good, huh? Yeah. Look how solid that is with just two bolts in it. Like you can't even move it. Yeah. I think uh, we'll call that good. Yeah. I might put some zip ties on it later. I gotta wire this in. I'm not sure if we have more channels on our solid state relay or not, I have to look. We'll probably wire this in while the engine's out because we gotta pull it still. It'd be a lot easier to do that. So, let me make sure I have enough line here. This is some of the line we actually used on the Pinto. So here, hold this right here, Wall. Our transmission we're actually gonna use has a different fitting location. So there was two different styles of these 4L80s. I think it's like 97 and older and 97 and newer. So we're gonna need that much to do one of them. Yeah, we got enough line. We got three or four feet too much. So let me show you how these go together. I'm actually gonna take this black coating off of here. It just peels off really easy. They sell us in stainless or they sell it in black. And I had bought black when we did the Pinto, but since I have, you know, the old red, white, and blue fittings, I really don't want a black hose, so. This is Earl's Speedflex hose. It has working pressure up to 1500 PSI and 450 degrees Celsius. You can see it's like the liner in there is really tough. So that's why I'm using that on the transmission. You wrap it in tape and cut it so it's not frayed. You wanna get this back on here, this collar, okay? Get that all the way past all your frays and stuff. This collar here, goes in between the stainless and the, what appears to be Teflon, I think. 
push it in until it bottoms out in there. Get it up on your fitting like that. And bottom it out. And then and this tightens up on here. That's what you get when you get it all together. Super tight fitting. It's not going to leak on you. Going to be able to hold whatever kind of pressure. You can even use these for power steering lines and stuff. This is like aircraft quality top fittings here. But that's going to be it for tonight. I'm going to finish up making these. It's starting to rain, so y'all aren't going to be able to hear what we say anyway. I got to get some parts tomorrow. I'm going to try to get a radiator hose and the fittings we need to finish up this plumbing. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Come on, we got to go. You can't live in the shop. Come on. Oh, she's putting the brakes on. Come on. Come on, Granny. She's Come on, go get in the barn. It's raining. Okay, you ready? Go oh, for yeah. it. Sweet. Raymond's hard to video because he stops doing whatever he's doing anytime I get the camera out. Next morning, I gotta go to a couple towns over and get the fittings we need that I didn't order correctly. It's kind of a cool place. They got like a dirt track shop there. It's like the only place anywhere close to me that sells AN fittings and stuff. Look at that. I gotta drive like an hour to get this stuff and she just leaves it on dead empty for me. Dang, son, parachutes at the gas station. He must be getting the same fuel I am. Race gas. I would love to have a new Mustang like that. Every time I see one of those, it's like a 20 something year old guy. It's got every add on you can think of and I don't know how they afford it, really. They're so expensive, just stop, but I do love them. We got our fittings. I bought some more clamps like we use on the fuel lines because they're hard to find these big ones. Car with a parachute and horses in the same day. Crazy world we're living in. Well, I picked up Marge. We're gonna go try to get this crazy radiator hose that Ralphie made. <laughs> I did have to take it to Japanese just like the list had on there. So uh, we got that done too. It was very good. I really can't believe I saw a car with a parachute and a horse-drawn buggy in the same day. You just never know. America, right? America, full surprises. I missed out on drive your maroon vehicle day. All right, let's go see if we can figure this out. So we looked around everywhere in there. Look at this bad boy. So this is for uh, F550. Ford, he That's said, a and I got an adapter to go from a big size to a small size, and then we got like a suburban Chevy upper hose. So hopefully, with all this, we can make it work, and we can make Ralphie proud. Well, thankfully, we made it back home with Marge driving. I'm gonna go ahead and throw together these couple fuel fittings I need to do. <clears throat> it's tough, but that's what you want. You want them to stay on there. But does it fit? Let's see. Oh yeah, dead on. I remember having conversations with my buddy Tommy at Hot Rod Hoarder. I was talking about, have you ever seen a big block turbo car? And me and him at the time hadn't. We'd only seen small block cars. It was before it became popular to do it. Not that it had never been done, but we had just never seen it. When I was doing like my big block Maverick turbo, there just wasn't many around. If you like torque, you really can't beat a big block turbo car. At some point, I've got to figure out a way to better mount this fuel cell. It was just sat in here and strapped in, but I like that it's a big one because I like fuel capacity because I like street cars, but I gotta figure out a way to mount it at some point. These ones that are on the car are a little harder to do. You need to kind of do it all at once, it seems like. Mary and Joseph. There we go. So I got that transmission line on here now. There's enough room there to go between the radiator. I'm gonna end up tying these up to the frame rail here and I'm gonna cut these guys to length here. So this transmission has two inlets and outlets right here at the front. But if you go over here to our new transmission, it's got one here and one there. So I think this is 97 and up and that one's the older version. So I'm gonna make sure and make the line reach all the way back to here. And with those fittings that are so tight like that, I don't think we'll have any trouble with our transmission tunnel. Definitely not the back fitting. I don't think so at the front either though. So I'm gonna put some tape around this and cut this. Ooh, watch out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and wrap the other half of this line back up through here and cut it, because I know we have more than enough. We got plenty of extra on this one. Like I said, this was just left over from the Pinto. You build enough cars, you end up with a bunch of leftover things that you ordered wrong or whatever. At some point, I'd like to get one of those like drag racing lower balances that covers down to here or whatever. I love how those look on this car, but I don't know who makes a good one and I may just end up making one out of aluminum or something. <laughs> Nothing interesting going on here, just same old, same old. How y'all doing? How's your mom and them doing? She good? Hey, Ralphie. What's 
up? That was cool. Good. 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 Good deal. I'm making the last fitting here. Yeah. For the transmission. Yeah. You know what I forgot though? What? I never put a fuel filter on this thing. I just oh. remembered it today. Thankfully, we do have enough fittings to do that. So we gotta put that in here in a second. That should work out perfect, right? Yeah. I went to the parts store today. Oh. I felt a little bit funny walking in with this. So we got this piece here. Not bad, huh? Look, it goes all the way across. Yeah. And it's this piece here that curves around from the big side. So I bought this that we can put in the middle to adapt it down. Think it'll work? Maybe. We're about to see. I was really worried because I didn't put it together and I thought, was he a little off on the size? Let's see if you're right on your sizes here. Okay, that's a perfect fit there. We know it's not gonna turn down. You wanna guess what this hose is off of? One of your favorite vehicles. You tried to talk me into buying something like it. Ooh. It's off of an F550. Oh, yeah. Makes uh, sense. We just went in the back and I'm like, okay, that's the right size there. Hey, that fits too, Ralph. Hey. <sighs> All right, so if we cut them about here, we should be able to splice them together right there, right? Yeah. Probably would have been easy, easier to buy a radiator, but we're here now. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to let go of Popsicle just long enough for us to get this hose on here. Wall, you wanna hold this big one here? I hope this works after all this. I probably need to use the little one as much as I can because the big one's gonna create more ground clearing tissues. What do you think, Wall, right about there? Sure. The little one was much cheaper than the big one. There you go. You can have that. This one's too big to chop. There, all right. That's the end we're not using, okay? Okay. And then this guy is supposed to go in here, in theory. Come on. Inch and a half to two inch is what this is. I don't know who has inch and a half exhaust on their vehicle, but I guess something does out there. Why is that? Maybe. I tried this. It must change sizes in the middle. They're both like not fitting great. We're gonna have to do something different here. We're gonna have to probably make our own. Man, I thought I had everything figured out. Yeah, it's definitely bigger on that end. Great. When I was in there, I didn't see anything else that was even close aside from this. What do we right. have we can like weld together or something? Hold on. Just a moment of your time. See, this is the end we're trying to go into. It's the same size. This is the end I tried it into at the parts store. So yeah, it definitely changes size lines. She's always first in line. We just don't keep small tubing around here much. Everything we work with is a little bit bigger than that. I'm just not seeing anything. I think we're just gonna have to cut this one down the center, squeeze it together, and weld it back, unfortunately. So, How much are you gonna cut out of it? I don't know yet. I think we're gonna have to narrow this up more than we are this. So we're probably gonna cut it here and cut it here. Squeeze this one in more than this one. leak in the back floorboard on this side. I don't know where it's coming from. I don't let it get rained on anymore. So we can squeeze that in about that much and this one in about that much. Maybe it'll work. That right there-ish. I think that'll be the right size. Yeah. Still too big. See, I go smaller. Now is the other side the right size? I think it'll fit, see? Yeah, it will. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, it needs to be tied in there. Yeah, that'll fit. Sometimes you just gotta make the part. I think it's still too big. Oh, was way off, wasn't I? Squeeze around down. Okay, like four cuts later, I think we're finally there. I think it was definitely more than that. <laughs> they don't have to know that, son. <laughs> yeah. So, if I've got it right, it should work. So uh, you gotta weld it? Yeah, I gotta weld it up now. They might be going duct tape for something. Oh wow, duct tape saves everything. Oh wow, duct tape saves everything. I weld the inside and out. Guys, I'm gonna say something I've never said on this channel before. I think this is my Mona Lisa. 
Look at that beauty, huh? It's pretty, it is. I don't see no back taters. I know it's gonna restrict flow a little bit, but we'll see how it goes. Sometimes you don't want the water going through super fast. It doesn't get enough time to cool down is what I've heard. I right, get right there. Boom. There goes your leg. And there goes your leg. You may have to Push zip tie it up, up or something. Yeah, we got plenty of spots to zip tie it. If you're wondering, we have a brand new SFI harmonic balancer we put on it. We just hadn't put it on there yet. I think that's gonna work great. Woo! You did good on your measuring, Whoa. Ralph. You even questioned me. Just I'm, I'm brings sorry. my heart down. I think we've got it all plumbed now. Yeah. All the radiator hoses, transmission lines, oil lines for the turbos, fuel lines, fuel lines boost and vacuum lines. They're all run, aren't they? Yeah. You know what we haven't tried though? What? The drive shaft. Dang oh, it. I forgot about it. We better it. try that yeah. before we pull this it's in. It's in the trunk. It's in the trunk. We got this thing made last year and we have never test fit it. So it's got a 4L80E Turbo 400 yoke on it. It's a custom built drive shaft that Hullo made. I told him this thing's gonna have all the donkeys, so come on. Why is it not? Is the spline so rusted the up? The stuff's jiggling in there. This is just a core. It actually sat outside in the rain before I got it. We may have a lot of trouble getting the slide in there. Maybe that'll help it a little bit. Inside there look okay? I mean, that looks oh, fine, so but it still needs it. You got the big shot on me, bro? Hey, that's still smells good. There. Just needs a good push. It's going, but it's going real slow. I felt it, dude. You want it push? Yeah. I don't want to get it where we can't get it back out. Look. It'll definitely work. Yeah, if it went in about an inch and a half, two inches, it would be. Yeah, it's going to be okay. Yeah, There's good. no reason to jam this thing in there and get it stuck. It's going to be the right yeah, length. Yeah, it's going good. I want to make sure it fits our actual transmission here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There you go. That'll work fine. And we measure this is the same length as the one we're using. Awesome, that's good news. We forgot to put the fuel filter on. Fuel Classic. So if we cut it right about there and there, we should be good. This is a Holly 10 micron filter, 162552. And that is designed to be after the pump on an EFI car to keep from, you know, junk from stopping up your injectors and stuff. These pumps have a sock built into them before the pump, so we don't have to worry about that end. I can't believe I forgot this. A little bit scary to cut it right in the middle like that, huh? Yeah. You just want to make sure your arrow is pointing the right way so you're flowing the right, correct direction. Now we have a fuel filter. It's installed. I didn't forget it. Am I forgetting anything else? We'll just find out later. Yeah, we will, won't we? <laughs> I guess it's time to pull the engine out. Woohoo! You want to share my dinner with me? Can you even chew that? <laughs> what was that? Start it up. Ah, yeah. No brakes, no gears, here we go. There's Mark. <laughs> Grand, you're risking it. You're really risking it, Granny. Ooh. Move, Grand. Oh, hey, it rolls nicely now that we beat on those spinner wheels, huh? I just noticed we never made a hole for the wideband O2 sensor. These need to be at an upright position so they don't have moisture settle on them. Usually people mount them in the downpipe as well, so we're gonna go right about right there, Ralph. Okay. There you go. As much as I hate to see this thing come apart, it's for the best. We gotta pull this engine out and get our oil pan intake and everything bolted back on, so let's blow it apart, Ralph. Let's kind of take all this off and just like all together here. We need to pre this up before we put it back on, don't we? Yeah. Made it all nice and smooth in there. If you're wondering where Wally is, she went to a Bible study tonight. Okay. Watch my piggies, bro. So this is a Kia or Hyundai fan. It's pretty beefy, boy. I think it's about an 18-inch fan. But I don't remember exactly what car it came out of, but something back when I worked in the body shop. Look at all that room. It must be nice to have a race car. You don't have to have a radiator. We gotta fit everything in here though. At some point, I'd like to make air ducts that come up. I can't really hook onto these, but if I could blow cold air up on them, you know, I'd like yeah. to do that at some point. That'd be good. Why don't you pull the wastegates, buddy? Why is this stuck? I don't know. I know, but you gotta take the bolt out. 
in order for that to come loose. We barely get our distributor out of here because obviously I moved the engine back as far as I could. Looks like I'm gonna to to take the cap off and get that out. So this is a dual sync distributor, just like we have in our motorhome. It provides a cam and a crank signal to the Terminator X. So it's super convenient if you're swapping something over to EFI. The way we set this up, we have our manifold air pressure sensor and our manifold air temp sensor right next to each other in the back of the intake, trying to keep everything clean looking. It's all streamlined. Oh, oh hey, no, no. Ow, <laughs> no, you cannot get my hair. Oh, man. oh, she's smelling again. Granny, if you knew what you look like with that lip out. <laughs> she's so pretty. She's beautiful. This is our idle air control. This is our TPS sensor here. This is a 102 millimeter throttle body on a Dominator flange EFI intake. A set of 2200 pound injectors in it, so we should be able to make all the donkeys, even on ethanol. If you haven't seen the whole build, these are actually Lakester headers, like a street rod header that we, you know, they normally go out like this. We cut the tubes and brought them in, and that's how we did it. Is it really that big? What? You brought them out. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. I may have exaggerated there. Right there is our coolant temp sensor. I always try to put the sensors on the back of the engine if I can, if I have an option. It just looks a lot cleaner. You already have a lot of lines and wires with a EFI turbo car anyway. It should be able to come off now. Look at them 320cc cylinder heads. Those are super big. Yeah. Didn't you pour them even more? No, I didn't pour them. Somebody else, I believe, poured them before we had them. We gotta make sure we don't get no jump down there. I probably need to take these off. If you didn't follow the build with the engine, which this engine build happens to be the most popular video we've ever done on the channel. I think it has over 2 million views now. I will say I did a couple things I would do differently nowadays, but this engine really needed to be bored. I just did not have the money to really do it at the time. So we just honed it and threw some pistons in it. It's got dome top pistons. It's got aftermarket H beam rods. These are Speedmaster 320cc heads that have had new valves put in them and valve job and ported before we owned them. They're kind of mystery heads, so $87 Summit Racing Camshaft. I'd love to put a roller in it one day, but we're gonna try it this way first, see how it does. Wait, did you say $87 camshaft? Yes. What? Yeah, it was $87 the cam was. Eventually, I'd like to make it a roller cam motor, maybe put some name brand heads on it and see if it goes a lot faster or not, but right now we're gonna see how far we can go on this cheap setup. We might need to make some braces to go over to the block from here, even though it's a super short distance. These are T4 flange turbos. I'm a little worried about this engine because it sat for like two years, so, and not the cleanest environment. Let me get the header off there. Yeah. Don't get them up close on them welds. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. We'll head around it. Cool. Look at them things. Nothing but bag taters. Buggers. Okay, they'll never know it going 120. There's our other turbo. These GT45s have a kind of funky V-band flange size. Easiest thing to do is what I've done to them. This is just a standard four inch V-band clamp and I welded it to the housing itself. So I'm gonna weld up these headers, but first I gotta get the paint off where I'm about to weld right there. This one is an even tighter fit than the other one. You can see how close to the frame rail this side is. Look how short our primary tubes are in this thing. It was very hard to make this fit. We may have to actually modify a little bit right here and here for the plug wires. I'm gonna see when I get the engine out, but I guess Ralphie can weld this one up too. This one's done. Looks pretty good, buddy. Yeah, did you did really good at welding. I just love fin valve covers, like the old Offenhauser valve covers and Mickey Thompson's and stuff. I just grew up reading every car magazine I get my hands on, and stuff like cylinder head design is so interesting to me. And like these have raised exhaust runners, really big ports. I always wanted to put aluminum heads on my Maverick when it was big block turbo car and just never was able to do it. This is like the engine I wanted to build for it back in the day. It's really exciting to me to do like an aluminum head, high compression, twin turbo car like this. I think we got it ready to pull aside from our two motor mount bolts and our transmission cross member. I tried to leave as much as we could on the motor because there's no reason to disassemble it, really. Have to jounce it, son. Yeah, jounce it. There you go. Okay. Let's go. 
Just don't drop it down the engine, that's all I ask. You got it hooked? No, I don't. Okay, good deal. We're ready to go. No, I'm not. All right, let's do it. I'm not, wait. All right, we're ready to hook this up. We're not, wait. Do you need me to do some beefy welds on that? Probably. Oh, gladly. We do have to weld these motor mounts in better. We're just tacked in place. I got you. Thanks, bro. We got the starter wires loose and I forgot. You left in the car. Yeah, it's because it's heavy. There you go. Now it's not. All right, I got to get the bolts loose from this transmission and we should be good. I'm so proud of my cross member. I think this part was the old bed frame we used. Oh my goodness. If you knew how many engine transmission mounts I've made out of old bed frame, man, there's a lot of them. There you go. Oh, our catalogs fell out. What do we got under here? I was going to say, which ones did you use? We got a Miller Welder book and an Auto Source Today book. The two thickest ones I have later in the house, I guess. Make sure I don't break something else. I don't remember if we've actually pulled the engine with the pan on it. It's got a nice pan on it. There you go. Ooh, bouncy. Honestly, it took way less time than I thought. To pull it? Yeah. I knew it wouldn't take too long. Because we had no fluids. Like, a lot of your time's taking up, like, draining all your fluids and stuff, you know? Yeah. We passed the course for work. Wide engine, isn't it? Yeah. I still one day would like to do a Godzilla or a Coyote and something, you know? Yeah. We need to do one of those. They're very wide as well. Yeah, that's the biggest drawback to them. They're a great design. They're just really hard to fit in something. This will go back in with a new transition, right? Yeah. This was always just a mock up. And it'll be final install, right? Yeah, next time it goes in, it should be final. Look at that big, empty engine bay. They have such <laughs> wide shock towers. They That's do. one of the great things about these cars. That sounds so funny. You know, a guy gave me this transmission. He told me it sat out in the weather. Don't get up. There you go. And we put our flex plate on backwards last time. We did? Yeah, they, we had a bunch of comments that the flex plate was on backwards. So I guess they're right. I don't know. I would assume the SFI sticker goes to the front. So we'll swap that around. I'm going to pull the pan off here real quick. Show you guys the goods here. So it's a stock crank. I believe it's standard main, standard rods. I can't remember the brand on the rods though, but it's H-beam rods. I believe we put a high pressure oil pump in it. I don't remember if it was high volume or not, but you can see there that they're H-beam rods. It's a four bolt main block, which I honestly didn't remember until I just looked at it. These blocks are good for a lot. I would not say they're as stout as a big block forward block is, but they're still really stout. I guess we're going to end it off here tonight. It's getting really late. We just wanted to get this thing out. We'll see you guys tomorrow and finish this off. Shoo! Next day, look at all this emptiness in here. Look, look at all this room though. Huh? That's all crazy. kinds of room. I actually measured my super coupe and the shock towers are about two inches wider on a Fox body Fairmont versus a MN12 platform Thunderbird, if you didn't know. I know there's six people that are dying to know that, and I'm one of them. I wanted to show you guys a comparison real quick, though. I just happen to have a 4L60E and a 4L80E sitting right beside each other. You don't always get to see stuff like this right beside each other. Look, the length is like, is that identical? It's really close. Like this one, I think maybe just a tiny bit longer, like maybe an inch or something. So if you didn't know, these are based off of a Turbo 400. The Turbo 400s came in, you know, big block Chevelles and stuff like that and three quarter and one ton trucks. So that's what this transmission is based off of. They basically added a gear to it. So now it's an overdrive version of a Turbo 400. This is based off the Turbo 350, which is a lighter duty transmission. So I always go with the beefier, heavier transmission because you can spend a lot of money and make something that's smaller hold up to the power, but usually it's cheaper to go with the heavier duty factory transmission. So there's just side-by-side -side comparison. I don't know all the spec differences, but you can see 
input shafts bigger, output shafts bigger, the, the case is bigger, the pan is bigger, it's just bigger. And bigger is better. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I knew somebody was waiting to say it. I also wanted to get a width difference on these engines here. So here's the LS motor for the Metro Mite. So we're not counting the exhaust system. This thing's basically 20 inches wide at the cylinder heads. And what is a big block Chevy? It is basically 24 inches wide, so four inches wider. I figured since we had them sitting here, it might be some good information for somebody yeah, to have. Goodies. The next video, you should see us button this engine up for the final install, bolting it to our new transmission with our new converter and everything. Maybe it'll run in the next video. I hope it will. Yeah. I am so excited about this. I've been thinking about doing a cleanup video on it. Let me know if you'd like to see a cleanup video on buffing it and cleaning it up because it really has a nice paint job on it for the most part. It just kind of chalked out. I was thinking about it while we were working on it. You were thinking about buffing it? Like, it looked pretty good. I, I thought it. I saw that in your eye. Hmm. We appreciate you guys watching our channel and following along. The build on this car, it's like one of my favorite. It's definitely the top two or three cars I own, in my opinion. I really love these cars. Hard to find a five-seater car that has a great suspension design and is lightweight, you know? And that's why I love them. And I like cars that are square, just in general, you know. But we really appreciate Holly's help with our channel. This build would not have been possible without help from Holly. We really appreciate them. We're super excited about tuning this Holly Terminator X on this car. It's been too long since we've tuned something real fast like that. Ellie's wanting some of them vainas, isn't she? Pour one out for your homies, guys. Exactly. Drink your RC colors. Eat your bourbon barbecue vainas. And you can check out our second channel at... Sleeper Dude 2. You can check out our third channel at... Sleeper Dude Armed. You can check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at SleeperDude88. You got it. Oh, watch out, guys. Oh, I think it hit all of us. You can buy our merchandise at thesleeperdude.com. We got hats, hoodies. Sometimes we got squeezy artwork. We just recently got keychains. It's just a whiskey dent stickers and Ralphie tractors sometimes and wall drawings sometimes. So check that out. It helps support our channel as well. Uh, all that stuff gets shipped from here and is done right here in-house by us. Oh, man. Dr. Shuttle. Dr. Shuttle. Hopefully, we'll have a same drag strip soon. I'm excited about racing it. I don't know about racing it at some of these big, crazy events. I really like going just testing and tuning, guys. I'm not super-duper competitive like a lot of people are, I guess. Yeah. I want to get back in the five-second range in the eighth mile or even sixes, you know? Hey. We don't expect to be in the fives right off for sure. <laughs> Pretty much all my cars have started out like in the sevens and you get the sixes and it's tough to get down there in the fives. If you've ever done it, you know what I'm talking about. Future videos, I think I've got a deal lined out on a car. You might see that in the next video if all that works out. So stay tuned for that. We're also wanting to go on a trip in our RV. We got some things to fix still, some little things here and there. Hopefully we got the major things fixed. Uh, hopefully we don't know about any major things that aren't fixed. <laughs> but we're excited about taking it on a camping trip here soon. You can expect that hopefully as well. Hopefully we'll get our transmission for our Metro Mont soon and get that thing done. I want to get the Econoline back out and work on it yeah, a little bit as that's well. Super cool. Yeah, it is a cool one. We got some parts ordered for the Galaxy Wagon to do some more to it. Maybe we can get it all sealed up and fixed my carpet mistake and stuff like that. Ralphie's wanting to work on his truck. He's been wanting hey. to do that. So we were trying to get some stuff on its way for it too. I guess let's go check out the animals. You got new goats? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. We may have to give him a shot of the tortoise as well, right? Maybe. He was a little bit chilly coming up. Oh, yeah, it's cold weather for him, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, see how the piggies are doing? Right. We appreciate everybody that likes, comments, shares the video, everybody does super thanks, all the members. All that stuff helps, guys. We appreciate all y'all guys. But let's go see the animals. Woo! Woo! Oh, there's Granny and the donkey. Do you have a donkey treat, Mom? Yep. Oh, look, here's Vanya running. She's running in. Hey, you Granny, one, Granny? Get you a treat. Get them lips out there. Come on, look, you Granny. better eat it. Her Come eyes on. are so funny when she does that. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Oh, she's nervous about it. Come on! It's good. Granny, eat them. Eat them. Oh, oh, there you go. There we go. She finally got one. Granny, you're going to get the fence. Hilarious. Now they're wanting some treats Jeez. for sure. Look, Dad. <laughs> this one's the mama, right? Yeah. yeah. She's more cautious Ooh, than the oh, daughter. Wow. Come on. We got your RC Cola for you. There you go, girl. Mm-hmm. A lot today. Yeah, she got a bunch. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's 
she's losing more than she's getting. You are pretty. Maple, here, you want a treat? Here. I ain't put my finger in there, I know that. <laughs> you all That's did. a big treat. I so, know. Oh, that tastes like daddy's finger. Oh, yeah, that's good. They just grunt and grunt, don't they? She's talking to you. I know. Talk back. She's like, stick your finger in here, see what happens to it. <laughs> Look at all the new goats. What's the new Billy's name? I haven't named him. We don't have Frederick. a name for him yet, it's but. It's Frederick. He's the new Billy Goat, because if you didn't know, Rocky's been fixed long ago. So Rocky's had a bunch of babies, but since we're keeping them, we can't have the daddy. We, yeah, he had to be babies. fixed. So Mama wants some more babies, so she got a new Billy out here. Come oh, on. you got a treat? Catch him to bet you one. What are you doing, huh? Are you being in trouble today? Look, he jumps on all these goats. Let's well, see, you want a you, you want, want a treat? Goat treat? <laughs> They're good goat treats. He's like, yeah. I'll eat he, it. He'll, he nibbles on the oh, goat food, Yeah, you can't feed them. He eats it too. I mean, you can feed them, but he eats all yeah. of it. Look, George Jones is over here. That's so, so funny. It's so funny. <laughs> I'm a good boy. Where's Frederick? He's good hey, sometimes. Here, George Jones. He's like, oh, George, look at that. You want one? So if you're wondering, there is only one Billy in here that's yeah. not been fixed. That guy. I can smell him. Yeah, you can smell him from a distance. Yeah, it's a Look at him. Here, Billy. <laughs> You want some? Yeah, you gotta get Murph you want, Walk. Okay, hold on. Let me hey, get Rocky Jr. Murph! Murph, Murph. Oh. There you go, buddy. I'm a good boy. Oh, he's out. Where's he at? Oh, yeah, right there. Oh. Hey, buddy. There hey. you go. He's a good puppy. Ralphie thinks we need three or four more dogs, and oh, I don't no. think so. Bass at Hound, but Mastiff. No, no, no. Calm down. We don't need no down. more. Hey. He's cautious. He's cautious. Cautious Carl, that's his name now. And remember, Jesus saves. And Dollar Gentles there for seven miles. Woo!